Welcome back to Prosperity by Design. In today's episode, we are going to be breaking down and talking about all things to do with ownership. So basically, I really like to follow this structure that I've developed recently where we define the topic, okay, and then we break it down. And then from there, there's going to be a couple of things that I touch on. The first thing that I'm going to touch on is the three qualities of ownership, and then I'm kind of, you know, going to expand on them. And then from there, I'm going to talk about what it's costing you by not having ownership over something. So I'm really excited for today's episode because this has been something, just this, this is like a quick story. This has been something that I have been really just in a mood for lately. (laughs) I have been in such a mood for ownership and like taking ownership over lots of different things. Um, my life, my finances, my business, my housing, my family. I, I've found myself kind of in this more empowered, I guess you could say, I wouldn't really call it empowered, but like, I want to fucking do something about these situations and I'm tired of them kind of just going the way that they're going and I don't have any control over them and I have found myself in this state of I am going to take shit by the reins and I'm gonna make shit happen like I'm just gonna do it and so that's what's kind of been fueling a lot of my decisions a lot of my activities a lot of my posts, a lot of my episodes, etc. And I am really feeling this vibe of ownership and to have something that is my own. And so that's why I wanted to bring it up in today's episode. So the definition of ownership is the act or state of possessing something, which makes sense, right? Like when it's yours, you own it. So when you possess it, then you own it. That doesn't necessarily mean you're controlling it, but you, you have acquired it. Okay. So ownership That's a quick definition. Like if you were to go into Google, that's what it says. So let's break down ownership. So in this episode, I want to look at it in two different lenses. So the first lens that we're going to look at it through is personal ownership. Like what are you personally taking ownership of? What are you, what qualities, states, or actions are you possessing or are you acquiring? Okay. So personal growth and personal development lens, and then like even personal ownership lens. And then the second lens that I want to look at this through is through a business lens. So what are you taking ownership for in your business and what choices, what decisions are you taking ownership for? And are there decisions that are not being made or that are kind of not, you're not moving forward that you're not taking ownership for. So we're going to kind of break each of these lenses down. So the first one, personal ownership. Now this obviously like going back to the story that I was talking about, what's even fueling all of this right now, a lot of personal ownership is a lot to do with your personal life, your family, your house, your home, your finances. And a lot of the time, people will reference their finances as like the biggest struggle that they don't feel like they have control over. And a lot of people do have that problem, but I feel like, especially after this year of like really taking control of my finances, I feel like ownership of finances is actually really simple and really easy. And I think that there are other aspects in other areas. And I think maybe this is going to definitely be another episode that I have to outline. Just like, you know, a a recap of 2023. Um, But there are other areas to take ownership of. Like your relationships. Like are you... Are you giving what it is that you're looking to receive in your relationships? Are you giving what you're looking to receive in, you know, your family environment? Are you giving what you're looking to receive in your home, right? Like, I think of it this way. If you want to live in a specific kind of home, then what you give to it, whether you get a a cleaner or whether you clean the house yourself 
or whether you buy new appliances or whether you redo the bathroom, like you're giving the house your attention, you're giving the house your time and effort and energy. And that is taking ownership for what you are putting into this home. Like you're, you're taking ownership for what it is that you want in your own home and you're possessing the qualities in your possession. You're essentially creating this state that you are looking to possess, right? So that's what I mean in terms of personal ownership. And I think another way to kind of talk about this too, even is when you take ownership over these personal matters in these personal areas. So like, for example, in 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, I would always point the finger as to what was wrong with my finances. Like, oh, well, you know, so-and-so charged this much money for their group coaching and I didn't get anything out of it. Instead of taking ownership over the fact that I chose to be a part of that program and I chose to put myself in that much debt, right? Like there's a difference because when you're pointing the finger and when you're blaming someone, then it's the victim mentality. Whereas if you just take a moment and you just accept what's happened and you accept where you are right now, and you accept that there was a lesson that you needed to learn, then that's taking ownership over what, like, circumstance, whatever it was, that happened. So that's another, whether you're in personal, you're talking about personal ownership or even business ownership, that's another huge factor to consider. Like, the difference between a victim mentality versus a growth mentality. And a ownership mentality in all honesty like I even think of when I talk to people and like one of the biggest things that stands out to me is that it's easy to blame people it's easy to blame people it's easy to point the finger it's easy to say so and so did it but it's not easy to say yeah I accept that I made that decision and I did that wrong and it's all my fault like that's really that's not easy at all because then you look like a butt. <laughs> That's the best way to say it. You look like a butt when you when you say that. However, you also took the fall. Like you owned it. You you possessed the quality of responsibility around it. And that's really big. I think that's huge. And so that's what I mean by personal, like in a personal lens, in a personal sense, like personal ownership. So the second lens that we were talking about is business ownership. And business ownership is very similar in that it's taking action and taking responsibility for the choices that you've made. But I think that business ownership is a little, it's like an extension of you, right? Like it's not personally you, it's not like your personal decisions it's business decisions you know like for example I lost it today on a client all right like I just completely lost it and you want to know what this client asks for discounts left and right this client has already threatened not coming back to um, do business with us because we were going to be implementing a new uh, like new charge going forward due to the rising cost of doing business. And, um, you know, it's, this is the kind of client that puts it in order every once in a blue moon. It's not like this is the type of client who's ordering frequently and ordering a lot frequently. Like they are more or less like in the online world, these people are the people who want everything for free and they want everything for like seven dollars and they're annoying like they're annoying they're very annoying they wear on you they're they're very frustrating to say the least and that's this that's this client and so you know I lost it today on this client because he needed samples like yesterday and he called in yesterday in the afternoon and the FedEx 
person closes at three and I was like if I can get there before three I will try but I'm telling you right now like I am one person I have a lot of tasks to do and I've actually acquired more tasks and responsibilities since you know earlier on this year and so I was telling him I was like I will do my best and so then he called in at nine o'clock this morning and he was like I need you to send out the samples I was like I will do it when I go out to the post office at 10 o'clock so I went out to the post office and I sent out those samples and he was like I'm just gonna have my guy come pick up and I was like I literally just paid money to have this stuff sent to you and now you're gonna have your guy swing by from over an hour away to pick up these samples great thanks I'm so excited like I I didn't say it like that this is like a way subtler like more passive way of what I actually said on the phone but you get my you're picking up what I'm putting down and so I owned it though you know like the managing partner was not happy and I don't blame him he's right I shouldn't talk to a client that way but a client shouldn't be demanding that from a business either when they're not doing nearly the amount of business that you would you know you would cater to somebody for those kinds of, those kinds of requirements. Like if if he were paying upwards of, you know, seven figures of business a year, yeah, I'll I'll take care of him like that, but he's not. I'd be lucky if I get four figures of business out of this guy, right? Like this this is the difference between like those clients and those accounts that you know, they'll pay top dollar. It doesn't matter. Just get it done versus the ones that like heckle and hag to get their way. And so anyways, that was slightly tangential, but it's still part of the point of I owned that decision and it's not, it's not like me personally. It's nothing about me personally. It's just doing business. Like if this is what it is to do business, I'm okay with losing that business. Like I own the fact that I could have potentially lost that business. For all I know, I did lose that business today. And I'm owning that that's okay because in all honesty, it's not worth the frustration and it's not worth the um, anxiety and it's not going to break the bank. Like I'm, I'm not worried about it granted it's not my business so obviously it's a a, more of a topic for discussion amongst the managing partner but I like whatever I can either say oh I'm so sorry and like crumble and falter and you know like become this squishy little sponge or I could say okay you could take care of it and that's what I said to him I said okay you could take care of him the next time that he calls in because I'm not I owned it Like I just, it was a business, I own that business decision. And so that's what I mean by business ownership. It's more of an extension of you. And like, it goes both ways, right? Like I just talked about a pretty negative, uh, well, I wouldn't know if it's like pretty negative, but more negative than what you would want to hear kind of example. But, you know, you could also have the positive examples too, where you're, willingness to give more and go over the top and over deliver that's an extension of you like that's that's business ownership that's your willingness to over deliver is an extension on who you are and how you run your business like who you show up as like what CEO you show up as in your business so uh, it goes both ways it can go positive or negative I just outlined two very uh, common examples but you're picking up what I'm putting down. It's taking ownership for whatever it is that happens, whether it's good or bad. So that leads me to the next topic that I want to kind of dive into in this episode. And that's the three qualities of ownership. And the first one, I'm going to literally, I'm just going to like list them out and then I'm going to, well, I'm going to go one by one. I think that'll be probably easier. Um, the first one is that, um, You are proactive and solution oriented in terms of what it is circumstantially that's going on. So let's just take this uh, example for this guy that I lost it on the phone to today, right? A proactive and solution oriented 
way about going about this would be to call the guy back and say, hey, I'm apolog- I'm a- I want to apologize for what happened earlier. You know, going forward, if you can please outline your timing requirements so that I don't have to run a- rush around and pay all this money for nothing to happen or for you to just come pick up anyways... I would really appreciate it and then we don't have to get into these kind of kinds of debacles going forward, right? That's a very proactive and solution oriented like, hey, I'm going to be really positive. I'm going to apologize. I'm going to offer a solution and it's up to that other person then to take it. But what I'm doing is I'm taking ownership of the of the fact that I I did something wrong and that I need I needed to cool down and there is a way to avoid doing this in the future and it would be helpful if you can tell me what your turnaround requirements are because you telling me that you need it in two hours is just not it's not possible like it's actually physically not possible so it would be great if you can open up a little bit more time because there are people who are coming in before you that I need to service before you and you're calling in and demanding my full attention. So let's come to a solution here. That is being proactive and solution oriented. I'm not sitting there on the phone and saying, you suck like I just like I just did today. I'm calling him back and I'm saying, hey, I'm really sorry. I had a moment. Let's find a solution together. Okay, that's that's taking ownership for what I just did and going forward, how we're going to deal with the business. The second quality is being accountable and responsible for what actions you're taking or what decisions you make. So, again, going back to this example, taking accountability and being responsible, like taking responsibility for the fact that I lost on the phone. Right. And being accountable by saying. Hey, you know, going forward, if I get to a point where you're, you know, asking too much of me, I'm going to ask you to give me, you know, 15 to 20 minutes and I'll give you a call back so that I can take some time to get all of these things together and put all these pieces in the right places, right? Like I'm 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 being accountable by saying I will take this action so that we don't fall into this problem again. And that's another really huge thing. And I think speaks volumes because when you're taking responsibility, you're, you're doing something very uncomfortable. You're admitting that you're wrong and you're taking the time to think of action steps that you can start to implement so that you can both get better. And like we talked about in the first topic, solve a problem. And then you're also, you know, (laughs) outlining that you really want to make sure that this doesn't want to happen. This doesn't happen again. You're, you're like, Hey, stay on me on this instead of just, Hey, keep pushing my buttons. Right. So that is the second quality of ownership. And I think the third quality And I think this one may be the most important. And this one kind of covers more than just, obviously, this example that I keep referencing back to. But the third quality is committed to consistent, continuous improvement. Obviously, solution-oriented is a good thing. But it would be pointless for me to offer solution if it's not something that I'm going to continuously commit to doing down the line in the future. And I think that, like I said before, it comes up in more aspects than just this example. I mean, think about it this way. When you go to post on social media, just to keep it really tight in line with this online business example and like what this podcast really talks about, when you're committed to consistent and continuous improvement, your posts are going to get better. Your messaging is going to get better. Your client attraction, your attraction marketing is going to get better because you are committed to continuously learning and developing and implementing new things and you're you're improving upon what you last released. So, I think it's really important this third one it hits home because 
that's truly taking ownership in my opinion. Like obviously these other two qualities are great and they're definitely very relevant to the conversation. But I think the third one is probably the most important because that's what it's going to, that's what continues on. You know, it's not just like one instance, it's in the next couple of years and the next decade, you know, when the next generation comes in, are you going to be also implementing these values and these, um, you know, solutions and these responsibilities, you know, like it's something that would outlive just you. It would also move on into, you know, the future of your business, whether it's, you know, tomorrow, next month, next year, when, you know, the next generation starts to work, that is so truly very important because that is what continues on. And that also contributes to your reputation. People know that they can trust somebody who continues on and who continues to show up and who is going to be there no matter what, because it shows that you're reliable. So those are the three qualities of ownership that I wanted to cover really fast And the last thing that I want to touch on is this question of what is it costing you by not having ownership? So I'm going to talk in terms of like business, okay? I work for a family business, which is great. I love working for the family business, but I have no ownership in that family business. Do I want ownership in that family business? In all honesty, probably not because I'd, I'd like, it wouldn't, I wouldn't want to deal with the headaches. However, I do want the qualities of life that are associated with ownership. So in terms of business, owning a business allows for and opens opportunity up for a better quality of life because as the CEO, you have more equity in the company and the more equity that you have in the company, the more assets you have access to. So in terms of what is it costing me currently it's costing me my lifestyle (laughs) the the lifestyle that I'm used to is that lifestyle of ownership I was raised in that lifestyle of ownership and now I don't have that I don't have that lifestyle of ownership because I don't have ownership over any business or any portion of the business so what is it costing you and in in terms of the answer to this question that I just kind of like talked about, you could also expand upon it in terms of your peace of mind, your um, finances, your stress, your like, it goes back to this other personal lens of, you know, it's costing your peace, or it's costing your happiness, or it's costing your freedom, right? Like, those are qualities of life that ownership could be costing you because you don't have ownership in something. So in terms of what you're going through and what you're experiencing, what is your, maybe your struggle in business, your struggle in growing your online business and acquiring more leads or making more sales? What is that costing you? Is it costing you your peace of mind? Like I think about it this way. Earlier on in 2021, when I was doing a lot of pitching and I was doing a lot of sales, I like I what it was costing me was my peace of mind. I I felt like I was constantly hustling. It was costing me my time. I felt like I was constantly grinding and putting effort into something and it didn't feel like I was getting anywhere or attracting anything with what I was putting out content wise. So naturally it was costing me my sanity. Okay. When we go about ownership, outline the qualities that you want to preserve in yourself. So for example, I was reading this, this is just like the fifth example that I keep, I'm like, Oh yeah, for example. But I was just reading an Instagram post about how this one particular person wanted to build their business in such a way that they didn't have to work early in the morning and they didn't want to be on their phone early in the morning. And that's taking ownership for the decision that they know they know that they don't want to be on their phone early in the morning. They're taking ownership for that decision. And in 2024, they are not going to start working until 10 a.m. 
okay that is taking ownership for a decision and what is happening is it's currently costing them you know their happiness and their peace in the morning and now because it's costing them that they're going to implement a method or a strategy so that it no longer costs that you understand what i'm saying so that is what i wanted to expand upon in terms of ownership i feel like this was a pretty solid episode it's like probably one of the longer solo episodes that i've done and I think it's really important to consider, especially in terms of how you go about building your business. That's really why it's important. So that wraps things up for today. I want to thank you for tuning in. And I want to also remind you that reviews are how podcasts live and thrive. And if you could take the 30 seconds to leave a review, I would greatly appreciate it. Starting in 2024, I will be going over reviews on certain days of the week when I release certain like episodes on, you know, like Thursdays, I will be doing Thursday reviews and I will really be looking forward to the reviews that come in between now at the end of 2023 and the future reviews that start to come in in 2024. So I want to thank you again for uh, tuning in and listening and staying tuned and being a subscriber and following and I will talk to you soon.